be here next Sunday as well, every Sunday. Thank you. Bye-bye. No genocide allowed in Gaza, not in our name. Nicht auf unsere Nummer. Hello. I'm a Jewish Bundist, if you know what that is. The Jewish Bund was the anti-fascist movement in Europe, oh. where my mother comes from, in Warsaw. Yeah. Her brother was a partisan. So was my father-in-law. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I have a picture of him with a gun. Oh. He hid in the woods. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh. Here, I'll give you my card. I'd love to uh, put uh, that picture on the internet. Really? I'm, I'm not sure if I'm allowed. I want to speak. Yeah. No, sir, huh? Abraham. Weisfeld. Yeah, I am in, in uh, Doctor of Political Science from UCOM. Oh, I would have to speak to my sister-in-law. Of course, because, all the better. Uh, you know, I don't want to get bad with my family. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, there's a picture on the um, picture of him in the uh, Holocaust Museum. Museum. Yes. Oh. Yes, with his gun. You uh -huh. look at him. Okay. <laughs> if you ever go there, you'll see. Uh huh. Yeah. I have a one picture of my my mother's brother with all the women that he had saved you know they set up like an underground railway yes. for women to escape from the warsaw ghetto so to save the nation so the women could make children yes my, yeah. my father-in-law he it's in the, his uh in the holocaust in his movie in his little minute he, he, talked, he says he was growing up by uh, nazi train he was blowing up the train. Oh, very good. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he wow. passed away about five years ago. Uh, but uh, he was, oh, he survived. He my survived. my uncle, uh, he was uh, conscripted into the Red Army, okay. and then we lost him. We don't know what happened to him after that. You know, so. My father-in-law was the only one to survive. Wow. He lost his parents, grandparents, sisters, and brothers. Wow. So yeah. he was all alone, and when he came here, it... He came here because he had a relative here. Oh, yes. So they were sponsored, yeah. Sponsored. But other Jewish refugees were not allowed to come to Canada. No, no. And they even turned away the boat. Yeah. yeah. S.S. San Luis. Yeah. yeah. Before, hard. during, and after the Holocaust, even, they were still turned away. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it's very hard to survive alone. And it, he would never talk about it. And it made him a little, you know... Hard to deal with it. Traumatized, yeah. Traumatized. My parents, you know, they were always, always angry, and they turned their anger against each other. Oh my! You know, my it's my really sad. Was always angry. Yeah. Yes, he was angry, Same and thing. in those days, you didn't have somebody to talk to. Yeah. He would have been better off talking to somebody. Yeah. So he ended up drinking a lot. Oh. Uh. Uh. My father smoked. Smoked. He tried to stop, but he eventually died of pneumonia. You know, but in our family, four out of four hundred survived, in both parents' wow. families. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my. Yeah, I, I'm very lucky on my side of the family. I didn't have anybody. Well, from I had aunts from Paris. And oh, in France it was better. France. Forty percent lost. From what I know, they survived. Mm. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I don't. Yeah, in Poland it was ninety percent loss. Yeah. Forty percent in France. 40% in Holland, 100% uh, in Germany, except for 60,000 Zionists, you know, who got out on a deal. And uh, 
Denmark was the only country that saved its Jewish population, and Muslim Albania. Yeah, they protected the Jewish who were living inside the country. They hid them. Yeah. 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 The only reason my father lost his life was he was the oldest, and he left the house and left everybody in the house and ran to the partisan group. Yes. And uh, uh -huh. he survived. The yeah. others were all. He had shot. to. Yeah. He had to, but it's yeah. My mother told me that uh, when she came back into the Warsaw ghetto after she had escaped, when she got a message from her brother, she came back to give messages to other people on how to escape and where to go, because a lot of people wouldn't even try to escape because they didn't know where to go. No. They didn't think there was any place to go to. The place to go to was the USSR, even though they were anti-Semitic. Yes. They still <laughs> were better than Nazis, you know. Yeah. My father, yeah. and uh, so my mother came back, and she got her younger sister out, and uh, her mother said that she didn't want to go with her because in Russia they didn't have kosher food. Oh my she gosh. stayed, and she heard later on that she starved to death in the war to get her. Oh my gosh. She's starving like the Gazans are starving now. That's why I'm here. Because I, I, I know. Me, I can't watch the news. It's scary. Oh, I, I, I collect all the information I can because I have to know what I'm doing. So I listen to Russia Today, Press TV from Iran, and Al Jazeera. And then when I listen to the others, you know, they, they don't have any information. They just repeat cliches. Yes, and, and they show more about Gaza than they show about Israel. As much as I want to hear both. And I think they, they show the wrong side of the news. Y yes. And, and and they also give false news too. At first, you know, people were led to believe that there was mass rapes yes. happening from Hamas, as if they would, you know, stop, you know, their military campaign, and, you know, and, and go into doing rapes instead of, you know, doing their military job. You know, it didn't make any sense to me. So right away, I knew, you know, it couldn't be true. And they're still pushing this as, as propaganda in order to convince people that the genocide is necessary because they're claiming that the Palestinians are like what Netanyahu says is Amalek that they want to kill all the Jewish people and a lot of Jewish people believe that and so they feel like they have to be killed in order to stop being killed it's pathetic I, 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 I can't fathom it every time I hear something it's just oh and then the, uh, the friendly fire as well you know, Israel ended up, you know, shooting at uh, Hamas together with their hostages and killing more hostages than they killed Hamas. You know, and they thought that that was okay because they were, you know, doing their military duty. Yeah. And, you know, like, they've been trained to do this sort of thing, you know, and, uh, you know, it's insane. Oh, my yeah. Yeah. I don't know who to believe anymore. And, honestly, I don't like Netanyahu. I think he's over, overdoing it. Yes, and not only that, how does he dare speak in our name? We don't have a vote to elect him. You know, what is this, a dictatorship? You know, I find the, the Israeli Jews are different from the Jews here. Yeah. Uh, I worked for a doctor for many years, and I worked with every race you can imagine. Mm. And I found when... Uh, a person came who was born in Israel, mm. I tried to avoid doing business with them mm. because they drove me crazy. Mm. They, they were bargaining, not only bargaining, they felt that everybody owed them everything. Uh -huh. So I didn't like working there. Yeah, they're very chauvinistic, yeah. Very. And, and I'm trying to tell people that the Israelis there are not the Israelis here. Yeah. I, one time, one of the first times, you know, I came into Jerusalem, and I, I, I took a taxi to go to a, uh, a bus station, and, and he, he asked me for 40 shekels, you know, which seemed to me like a lot of money, you know, to go across town. It's a small town, Jerusalem. So I said, you know, that's too much. He says, ah, oh, don't be so Jewish. Ooh. You know, he's being anti-Semitic to me, you know, as if it's a joke. And the Israelis, they think that they're superior to other Jews. Yes, I, I, that I agree on, thank you. You know, I, even uh, another friend of mine who is Jewish, when I told him that
that's very expensive and I wouldn't spend a hundred dollars for something like that. Yeah. They said, oh, you're being too Jewish. Yeah. 